everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And welcome to Jamboree in August. Thank you to Prepper Potpourri for inviting me to this Jamboree collab. How fun. Jams and jellies are one of my favorite things to make. They make your house smell delicious. They're so fun, delicious. You can put them on anything. There are several channels involved in this collab. I will link all of their channels in the description box below for you. During this collab, you're gonna wanna watch Monday through Friday, I believe. All the videos in Jamboree, you're gonna wanna watch those. Subscribe to the channels if you're not already subscribed and comment on the videos for your chance to win the giveaway at the end of the month. Prepper Potpourri is going to be giving away a canning kit. So it's the canning rack. I believe there's some jars in there. There might be some lids. I'm, I can't remember what she had in there, but it is kind of like a little starter kit. Super cute, great idea. For your chance to win that, make sure you comment on all the videos in Jamboree. All right, folks, today I'm gonna be making the coffee caramel apple jam or caramel apple coffee jam, however it's pronounced. This is actually a ball recipe. So if you want the recipe, you better get out your pen and paper since it's not my recipe. I will not be publishing it. I'm just going to make it, but I will tell you the amounts as I'm doing it. And I believe you can find it on their Fresh Preserving site. If I can find that link, I will link it in the description box below for you. Otherwise, I'm just gonna tell you the amounts as I go, and I'm gonna alter it just slightly, just slightly. You know I'm gonna. <laughs> All right, let's get started. First off, in my pan, I have five cups of chopped apples. Oops, I don't wanna turn it on yet. I am adding in two cups of very strong coffee. The next thing I'm putting in is some Meyer rum. This is one of the changes that I am making. I am going to make this a spirited coffee caramel apple jam. I am putting in one half a cup. I am going to turn this on a medium high. I'm gonna go ahead and cook this till the apples get soft. So 10, 15 minutes, the ball recipe says five to 10 minutes. I don't think the apples are gonna get that soft, soft enough to puree in five minutes. So I'm gonna say 10 to 15. I'm gonna stick the top on. I'll see you in 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, I have let these cook for a little bit longer to get soft. I actually let them go for about 20 minutes. Um, I just really needed them to get soft before pureeing. I'm going to move this over here and we're going to use the immersion blender. I am going to start blending, so protect your ear bones. I'm going to call that good enough. I'm gonna put this back on my heat. Over here, I have my tiny canner out and I have four jars in there. And today I am canning with pure mason jars. So I have four pure mason jelly jars in there and they've been sterilizing for 20 minutes. This ball recipe processing time is 10 minutes. With my altitude, I add another five minutes. So that's 15 minutes. Technically, you don't have to sterilize your jars any longer but I still do. Old habits die hard and I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I sterilize those for 20 minutes. When I put my jars in to sterilize them, I also put three spoons into my freezer. Frozen spoons are how I test my set. That being said, let's get with the rest of this. Balls suggest to use four tablespoons of classic pectin, such as this, but what I do is use one box. I'm using Sure Gel with this because it's what I have. I don't have any ball pectin other than this one. And I reserve the jar for extras in case I don't get a good set. So there it is, Sure Gel. You can use ball, you can use Sure Gel. Whatever kind of pectin you like to use, you use that, one package. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in. Get my heat back on, we want it on a medium high. At this point, we need. I'm. At this point, I need to also put in my spices, whatever spices I'm going to use. 
The ball recipe calls for one half a teaspoon of allspice. Here is my half a teaspoon of allspice. I'm gonna get that going in there too. If you don't wanna use allspice, all spice, all spice isn't always my favorite spice to use. I much prefer cinnamon and nutmeg and that kind of thing. You can use whatever seasoning or whatever spices you want in here. Changing the spices will not change your canning time. So if you want it spicier, you could put in cinnamon, you could put in cloves, you could put in ginger, you could put in cardamom, whatever spice you like. As Soon as this comes to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the sugar. Two cups of packed brown sugar, light or dark, it doesn't matter. Okay, I wanna bring this back up to a boil. So we're gonna bring this up to a full rolling boil. That is a boil that you cannot stir down. This smells so good. I can still smell the rum. Even though the alcohol long cooks out, it leaves that rum flavor. If you wanna have a little bit extra rum flavor, you could put in a half a teaspoon of rum extract as well at the end of course, Be right before you fill your jars. If you're worried about foam, you can at this point add a half a teaspoon of butter. I don't usually do that. I don't like that practice, but you, it is certainly a possibility you can do that. Add a full rolling boil, and that is, I can't stir down this boil, it is boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for one minute. And as soon as my timer goes off, I'm gonna grab my frozen spoons and check the set. I can feel it getting thicker, so I think it's gonna have a good set. Okay, frozen spoon. We're gonna put a little bit on. See if it comes off in a sheet. And there you go, it's coming off in a sheet. Stick into my spoon. That means the set is good. I am ready to can this up. All right, so to can this, I have my jar lifters. I have my debubbler. I have a ladle. I have a funnel, jars, lids rings. Jams and jellies are quarter inch headspace. So this recipe says we should get four Half pints, let's see if we do. Just a smidgen more. Okay. you can see okay I am going to clean my rim and this is just wet paper towel that I use water for lid ring I am actually canning these with the pure jar next generation lids look how beautiful I love these jars and the caramel apple coffee jam that's spirited, looks and smells delicious. Go ahead and put her in the canner. Mm. 
make sure you debubble. You know, I had somebody ask me in the comments, or no, I'm sorry, not ask me, told me in the comments when I was doing my enchilada sauce, um, exp to, for me to explain why I'm debubbling my enchilada sauce. And I'm gonna tell you what, debubbling is just good practice. It's a good habit to be in no matter what you are canning. If you're canning broth, of course you don't have to debubble, but anything else with any kind of substance to it, you really should debubble. All right, ball, once again, not quite as much as you said I was going to get out of it. <laughs> and I even put an extra half cup of liquid in. I did cook it a smidge longer, but I had an extra half cup of liquid. And I, put, I cooked it with the top on, so it's, you know, couldn't be that much evaporation. Fingertip tight. Any tighter, your lids will buckle. Yeah, not, not four pints, just three, three half pints, sorry. That's okay though. This we'll use for a taste test, right? Okay, everybody's in the little canner. And I've got about an inch and a half, almost two inches water over. I'm gonna go ahead and get this filled up or <laughs> get it, the heat turned up. I'm gonna process these for 15 minutes. All right, there they are. I have just pulled them out of the canner. Okay, so it's not completely cold. It's still pretty warm, but pretty good set going on. Still steaming. <laughs> I was trying to cool it off faster so that we could see a good set, but um, still steaming. But man, does it smell good. I'm going to taste it, even though it's still warm. Pretty darn good. I love the added rum flavor in this. All right, that's all there is to it. It is quick and easy and super delicious. Beside that, who doesn't want a nice spirited jam? This would be great over brie and croat with some added pecans. Oh yes, yum. Or on some crostini with some nice tangy goat cheese. Or just to serve alongside of maybe the Spanish cheeses like manchego or iberico. Oh my gosh, I love that stuff. This will definitely be on my charcuterie board for Thanksgiving. If it makes it that long. I might make some more. I'm probably going to make some more. <laughs> this would be great over cheesecake too. To put the, the whole, put a whole jar on top of your cheesecake. Yum. Oh my gosh, you could do a lot with this. Or if you make a spice cake, you could layer this in between the layers of the spice cake along with a little bit of buttercream. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have tons of ideas. <laughs> anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. And I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at jennygop18. I'm also on Facebook. And you can visit my blog for all of my recipes at JennyGuff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. There you go.